Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov2 as usual and today we'll be taking a look at the T21 Tier 6 American Light Tank. So the T21 is the first tank from the T57 Heavy line that I'm reviewing because I usually start all my tank line reviews at Tier 6 and you get it after the M7 which many people really like but I just didn't and it leads up to the T71 and in my opinion, I mean, I haven't played the T-71 yet, so, uh, you know, I haven't got any first-hand experience on this, but in my opinion, the T-71 is the point where the T-57 heavy line starts to really pick up, because that's where you get the autoloader, and that's where, in my opinion, they're really fun playing. And the T-21, really, for me, is the last tank in this line that I'm going to play just for the sake of grinding out the experience to get to the next level and not really uh, for joy. So yeah, um, you could kind of probably guess from what I was saying right there that I don't really like the T21. Now, you know, it's not, a, it's not a bad tank. It's actually, I think it's actually quite a good tank probably, but it's just not my kind of tank. And uh, it's, it is actually quite versatile. You can play it in mainly two different ways. And I'm going to be... Uh, telling you what those are shortly. So really, this tank is very similar to the M24 Chaffee. However, the T21 is at tier 6 and the Chaffee is at tier 5. Now, the T21 is a bit larger than the Chaffee, so really it gets hit easier. Yeah, so its kind of main competitors are probably the MT25 and the VK. But really, it's not similar at all to the VK, and it's not similar to the MT25 either. So the best comparison that you can make with this tank is to the M24 traffic. Now, this tank has got 590 hit points, which is not a lot, obviously, because it's a light tank. I mean, at tier 6, you know, it's actually alright. It's not too bad, but it's not very good. So re really, usually, you'll be able to take two hits, and then you'll go down. But, I mean, that's alright. We don't really expect more from a tier 6 light tank. Uh, with my loadout, it weighs 23.14 tons. So that's just say 23 tons. So it's light, but it is not super light. It's actually relatively heavy for a light tank. And that means that if you, for example, engage tanks like the 5916 or the AMX 12T in this vehicle, you really need to go for the RAM because the fact that they've got an autoloader means that you have to take any measures possible to kind of compensate for their burst damage and ramming is one of them. So if you encounter one of those, which is not going to happen seldomly, go for the ram definitely if it's possible. Uh, driving those 23.14 tons is a 520 horsepower engine. Now actually that's not quite uh, right because I didn't re bother researching the top engine because I just wanted to get through this tank as quickly as possible. If you want to research the top engine, that will give you 560 horsepower. So that's actually a bit better. But I just skipped that engine because I just really wanted to get to the T71 as quickly as possible. Now, uh, if we're talking of research anyway, uh, I just may as well quickly highlight that. Now, basically the radio and this gun here carry over from the M7. So when you get your T21, mount them straight away. After that, you want to research the 76mm gun M1A1 here, uh, which is the same gun, I think, that, say, for example, the M4 uses. So, uh, yeah, this gun is equipped on quite a lot of tanks. Uh, so you want to get that next. After that, you've basically got the choice between researching the top gun or the top engine first, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can mount either of them without upgrading the suspension, and after you've mounted them, get the suspension. But really, uh, this tank is really maneuverable, even without the top engine. So if you just want to grind through this tank as quickly as possible, like I did, you can really skip the engine, because it gives you an upgrade of 60 horsepower, which, uh, no, actually only 40 horsepower. So yeah, that will quite significantly increase your power to weight ratio, and you will really realize the difference, but you do not really need it. So, without the upgraded engine, this tank already gets a power to weight ratio of 22.48, and that's really, really good. And if you upgrade the engine, it's going to be even better. So, that's really good news. And that means that this tank is really able to shift, but your speed is really limited by the 56.3 kph top speed of this tank, which is very bad, actually, for a tier 6 light tank. Really, that's 
yeah, that's just horrible. I mean, that's medium tank speed, and this is a light tank. So what that means is that you cannot do active scouting in this tank. I would never active scout just because your top speed is not good enough. However, you've got amazing traverse speed of 60 degrees per second. Uh, that's one of the best traverse speeds in the game, and it really allows you to take corners very well, and, as, for example, carousel enemies too. And this tank is probably one of the best tanks in the game for performing carousel maneuvers. The turret traverse is 42 degrees per second, which is awesome as well. So all in all, we can conclude from the maneuverability stats that this tank is highly maneuverable and mobile, but its speed is kind of a bit lacking. And that means that the way you really have to play this tank if you want to use it as a scout is that you have to use your all right speed compared to other tanks, um, not necessarily light tanks, but you know, medium or heavy tanks, to get into forward scouting locations quickly and then camp behind a bush and passive scout. That's the only scouting option you realistically got in this vehicle. Yeah, that that's basically kind of a, the, one of the problems of this vehicle, I feel, is the top speed limit. Now, the armour obviously is, you know, it doesn't really exist. It's got 28mm at the turret front and whole front, uh, so anything can penetrate that. 25 at the sides and 22 and 25 at the rear. So, really, you shouldn't ever expect to bounce any shots from this vehicle. And in some tanks, like, for example, the... AMX or the 5916, you can pull off some miracle bouncers sometimes, but usually that never happens in the T21. And you should never forget that this tank has got no armor. Next, the gun. Now, the top gun is a 76mm M1A2, and this is the same gun that is the top gun on, say, the Sherman Jumbo. Uh, and the EZ8 and tanks like that. Now, the problem with this tank on, say, the Sherman Jumbo was that. Uh, Basically, the Sherman Jumbo is that slow that you haven't got the maneuverability and flexibility to get this gun to fire the sides and rears of your enemy by a performing outflanking maneuver, say. But the T21 has got that maneuverability, and that means that you can really use this gun to hurt your enemies. It's got an amazing 18.18 18 rounds per minute rate of fire. That is ridiculously quick. It's gun just spam shots really. The penetration is really lacking at 128. Now what that means, especially considering that this tank gets tier 6 light tank matchmaking, which means that you will get thrown into uh, tier 9 games quite often. I believe that you can even get into tier 10 games, although I'm not quite sure about that. Please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think that you can get into tier 10 games. Anyway, believe me, the matchmaking is bloody awful in this vehicle, and that means that usually frontally you won't stand as uh, you won't stand the slightest chance of penetrating your enemies. So you have to get around the sides and rear, and that's alright. And uh, if you fail to penetrate from there, you've always got your gold rounds of 177mm of pen, which is quite alright actually for a light tank of tier 6. The damage is actually quite underwhelming as well as at 115, but uh, together with a great rate of fire, that means that you can really put out some serious DPM. I'm not sure what the exact figure of the DPM is, but it is really, really good. If you ignore this vehicle and just let it shoot at you again and again, it will really, really punish you and send you back to the garage really quickly. So if you realize that the T21 is getting around you, make sure to take him out quickly because these things can really hurt. The accuracy is not very good, however, at 0.4, uh, that really means that your abilities to snipe in this tank are quite limited, and you shouldn't try to put down long range supporting fire usually. The aiming time at 2.3 seconds is alright, but for a light tank it's actually not all that great. So yeah, those are the stats of the gun, and this gun actually is quite good for a tier 6 light tank, it's definitely one of the better tier 6 light tank guns and it suits a light tank really really well and in my opinion the gun is one of the strong suits of this vehicle. Also it gets 10 degrees of gun depression which means that you get an awful amount of flexibility with this tank. For example imagine that you're on the central hill on mines, you'll be able to really pest and harass enemies that are on lower ground than you with that great gun depression. Now last of all we've got the view range with 390 meters which is really good for a tier 6 tank. But if you want to scout with this view range in say tier 9 and 10 games, sometimes uh, 
or lost for time actually, your enemies will have better view range than you uh, over enemies are trying to spot. So for example, tier 10 heavies will have 400 meters view range. So you really have to be careful there and that really limits the scouting abilities of this tank as well in high tier games. And it gets 745 meters of signal range, which is actually really good. It's a tier 10 radio. So you will very seldomly break contact to your teammates. So those were the stats and what can we conclude of them? Well, really there are two main ways to play this tank. First, you can play it as a flanker, or alternatively, as a passive scout. Now, if you play it as a flanker, which I would advise mostly in maps with limited scouting opportunities, or if you've got favourable matchmaking, so that means you've got a tier 6, 7 or 8 game. In that case, I would usually play this tank as a flanker, which means that you play it a bit like a medium tank, say like you would play, for example, maybe a Type 59, only you'd always have to remember that this tank hasn't got any armour and can't take any hits. So you usually should uh, maybe wolf pack or uh, make sure that you're close to some allies uh, so that they can take hits for you. Or if you're on your own, make sure that you don't attack lots of enemy tanks at once, but single out one target and harass him till he's dead and then concentrate on the next. But never assault a group of tanks at once because they will take you out quite quickly. So really as a flanker, your main job is to take the fight to the enemy. For example, if there's a kind of a, if the fight's kind of getting stuck at the choke point, you should kind of go round get to the sides and rear of your enemy and just try to take them out or distract them so that your allies can push and take them out. This is quite similar to the tactic that you would use say in an AMX 12T but the great thing about this tank is that it's basically got nearly the rate of fire of an auto loaded gun within the clip but you don't have to reload the clip so uh, it gets a lot more reliable sustained damage uh, and that is a really important thing and that can really work as an advantage for you. Yeah, so um, that's the one method. The other method is scouting. If you want to use this tank as a scout, then you have to use it as a passive scout because active scouting is just not really very, uh, it's not really possible due to the low speed limit and to the big size of this tank. So really, I, it, passive scouting is really easy. You just have to really know your maps and you have to get to bush locations from where you will be able to uh, observe the enemy movements really well and then just hope that your teammates know where to position themselves to support you for, or to take out the tanks that you've spotted at long range. So what equipment should you mount to maximize your performance in both of these uh, different playstyles? Now really if you decide to mount equipment in this tank you have to make up your mind how you're going to play your T21. If you want to play it as a flanker, you want to have the vertical stabilizer, the tank gun rammer and vents because uh, that will just allow you to get the most out of this quite amazing gun that you've got. But if you want to use this tank as a scout, you definitely want to have the camo net and the binox to maximize your scouting efficiency. And for a third piece of equipment, you can really choose between the tank gun rammer or vents. But probably vents would be better for a pure scout. So yeah, that's kind of the setup I would go with. For crew skills, really you should just get camo on your entire crew. Because even if you're playing this tank quite aggressively in a kind of a medium tank way, then Camo will still be really useful because you can keep, keep your full camo values on the move as you are a light tank and that will, uh, if you've got full camo crew on top of that, that will allow you to sneak up to enemies and kind of ambush them without them realising till it's too late and uh, that's a really useful feature. Alternatively you could go for repairs if you want to play this tank super aggressively but I would really usually prefer camouflage over repairs. Obviously you want to have six cents as soon as possible in your commander Brothers and arms would be good too, as in any tank really, then probably for your driver, you'd probably want to get off-road driving or smooth ride, it depends on you, uh, probably smooth ride would be a little bit better, especially if you want to play this tank very aggressively, for the gunner you should get snapshot, for your radio operator it's quite straightforward, you obviously want to have situational awareness on a light tank, and for your loader, well the choice is not that great really, just get safe storage, you can never do anything wrong with that.
So that was kind of all for the garage review of this tank, so let's take it for a spin and see how it performs. So here's the first game I wanted to show you, it's on Winter Himmelsdorf, and this is actually a game that I had very recently. And uh, actually I wanted to show this to you the last, but uh, the what replays file crashed, so I can't show you the post game stats, so I thought I could may as well show it first. And uh, yeah, we've spawned on Winter Himmelsdorf, as I already said, on an encounter game. And what I like to do in my light tanks is, usually on Himmelsdorf you would go for the hill in your light tanks, but in an encounter game, uh, the two teams really clash at the hill, and there's not all that much opportunity to work for you in a light tank, I feel. So what I like to do is to push through the left flank or the centre uh, in my light tanks, and quite cheekily try to uh, kind of outflank my enemies and come round the rear to take up the artillery or maybe make it easier for my allies to push forward. And that's something that the T21 is quite good at. So many other light tanks would maybe have problems to deal with a map like Winter Himmelsdorf because it's just not really natural light tank territory. But the T21 is actually quite good on this map, I feel, because it's kind of, you can kind of play it like a medium tank. Now, right there, I encountered a T71, who uh, obviously has got way superior firepower to me. So I get shot into the Stuart, and now I'm just getting overrun by enemies, so I realise that I have to withdraw here, otherwise I'll have some real severe problems. So I hope that those guys will be too afraid to come around that corner now, because uh, I've got all those allies backing me up on the hill, hopefully. I'm not quite sure what our S51 is doing up there on the hill, on the front. And he was killed. No. Yeah, he was killed. So, um, kind of a shame for him. I'm going to try to back up my allies here. Taking long range shots at these guys. Actually, something that I disadvised in the review, but you know. Uh, if I get the opportunity, I'm going to take it. So, uh, luckily, these light tanks up here have decided not to assault me, which is quite good for me. So I got a few shots into those guys up there. I'm trying to get some more, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. The score's 3 to 2. It's a tier 8 game, which is actually quite a good matchup for this T21. Tier 6 light tanks get one of the uh, kind of a tier or tank class tier thing that gets the worst matchmaking in World of Tanks, probably, except for tier 4 light tanks. They get even worse than MM. I mean, they get thrown into tier 8 games, I think. I'm not, I'm not quite sure, but you know, consider a look, say, in a tier 8 game, it's just stupid. Anyway, um, oh, there's the Rhino Tower, I was very lucky that he didn't fire at me. Um, I know he has to reload now, and you can see that, although I haven't got the top engine, I'm really quick here. So, I auto-aim at him, uh, fire a shot, but it doesn't go in, and drive past. So I know that he's probably going to f be focusing on those other two um, allied tanks, pushing towards him. So I feel quite safe to, uh, yeah, try to so show some aggression here against that poor sick. But I can't see him. Oh, there he is. Okay. So let's hope he's pointing the other direction. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> this is just really where you want to be in the T21. I track him, which is really good. Um, you see me going for the rear drive wheel there? track him again but it wasn't really necessary anymore. Oh there's an AFK T25 slash two. So I go for a shot on him. The second one bounce off his gun mount so it's auto aiming. So I disengage auto aim and go for his hull again. I'm aiming for his lower hull just to be 100 percent sure. And yeah. Uh, so oh there's an AMX 100 but uh, I just managed to avoid him. Which is quite good. And press on up the hill. So let's see if we can get this guy. And oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> that guy just rammed me to death. Okay, so um, that was quite a short game, I guess. But I think it showcased that the T21, if it's played kind of correctly and gets into the right kind of situations and is backed up by some heavier allies, can really put down the hurt even in higher tier games. 
uh, if it manages to outflank its allies and get their sides a rip. So it was a real shame that I was taken out at that point because I could have done some really good work here. My actual plan was to go round to uh, engage that AMX 5100 from the rear and it really wasn't very good map awareness uh, and generally situational awareness but I didn't see that T-43 coming, or at least I could have guessed that there was somebody waiting for me behind that corner. And because I wasn't very low health, yeah, that, I guess that was kind of the wrong thing to do there. But, you know, I was really feeling very aggressive. And, uh, yeah, so that cost me my life in the end. So the lesson that you can learn from this is, you know, you can really hurt enemies in your T-21, but never forget that you're driving a light tank and not an assault vehicle, like, say, a medium or heavy vehicle. So yeah, um, that was that game, but I've got a second one lined up for you. And actually, this game was my first class mastery badge in the T21. So um, yeah, I didn't expect it myself, but it was good enough. So um, yeah, I've got a second game for you, and yeah, let's head right in. So this game here is on Redshire. It's a standard battle, and this is an example for a lot of rules matchmaking. So um, this is a tier 9 game, fair enough. There are only 49 tanks in our team, and 5 on the enemy team, so this is actually quite unfair. And we're basically matched up against the Chaffee, so the Chaffee's kind of the tank that we'll have to be uh, outmatching in this game to uh, basically fulfill our role well. And uh, yeah, so let's hope that we can do that. And although we're a tier higher than the Chaffee, probably I'd rather be driving a Chaffee than the T21. But they're both quite similar, but the thing is that the T21 is just a lot bigger than the Chaffee, and that's why it gets, uh, it gets hit quite often too. So I'm taking a quite aggressive spotting position right here, uh, but I decide that that's not going to help very much, and I just decide to be like super aggressive, go to these bushes here, and I just hope to get some spots off. So I'm checking that I'm kind of quite well camouflaged for these bushes. I realize that I'm not, so I draw back and try to reposition. So let's see if we can get some shots of this IS. Free. Now really you should never be firing if you're passive scouting, but I'm not really serious about passive scouting I'm more interested in getting some damage. So really I'm not trying to really passive scout But if I would be I should never fire that shot and really it was a highly speculative shot I don't think that one connected So both heavy tanks are chewing up that uh, T-54, and oh, there's the Chaffee, so that's our counterpart in this game, so let's see if we can hurt him a bit. So there's our first shot, you can see he's running away from us, but this is quite good that we dealt him down 100 damage about. So can we get that 110? No, he's behind the house. It looks like he's in the river gorge. And oh my gosh, there's an STI. So, we don't really want to get into a head-on fight with that guy, because it's clear he's going to win. I mean, really, if I could, say, track the STI and then circle him, maybe I I think I would have quite a good chance. If it was, like, a T21 against an STI 1 against 1 in, a, say, a, a training room game on Malinovka, I think maybe the T21 might even come out on top, but you know, a random match is never like a you know training room, which is quite an artificial environment. So uh, really, if I do that, I'll just get wrecked in this game. So I'm just not going to risk it. What I'm doing, however, is I realise that this flank here on the one line is widely open, and I just decide to really exploit this weakness, and we encounter uh, T25/2. Who seems to be a no? He isn't AFK. He's just uh, this is a classic example of tunnel visioning. He's just really honed in on those guys up there on the ridge, and this is something you can really do in the T21. Engage distracted enemies and really chew them up. You can see I've put 400 damage into this guy, 500 damage actually, without him being able to get a single shot into me. So I kind of oversteer a bit there, and it's a real shame that I can't take him out with that shot. But only one more, and there he's down. So that just showed that I was able to take down the T25-2 without taking a single hit point of damage there. And, um, except for him ramming me, obviously. And that is of over T25-2 is actually quite a maneuverable tank. So, and he's got a turret. So, yeah, that's quite cool. So I'm basically just auto-aiming up at IS-3, trying to just get some shots off. 
You never know if they'll hit. And this right here is just simply amazing. Wait for it. Uh, no, not yet. Oh my days, did you see that one? <laughs> I just picked up my second cone via through. That was such an RNG shot. I just love these things if they happen in World of Tanks. <laughs> but you know, on the other hand, you always keep cursing too because RNG just seems to hate you sometimes. So, yeah, I guess it's kind of worthwhile. So, it's a real shame that that GW Tiger was taken out before we could get the kill. No, actually, what was it? I'm not I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, it was a GW Tiger. The E75 gets a really meaty hit into us, and actually that GW Panther gets taken out too before we can secure the kill. But effectively, we managed to get two kill... Uh, well, kind of make it possible for our team to destroy four tanks in this game. I mean, we destroyed two, and then we enabled the destruction of two others. So, that adds up to four. Now, I'm trying to take out that M40 slash 43, but I'm missing all my shots. Now, the first one connects. Second one connects. Come on, can we please take this guy out? Third one, one more. Okay, so that's good. We've taken out all the enemy artillery. Or at least contributed to taking them out. And let's see, there's an AMX 5100. Now, this is quite a bad situation. I know that there's an E75 advancing to my position. And, you know, I know there's uh, an IS3 up where, there somewhere. And there's an AMX 5100 in the town. And yeah, you know, just talking of IS3, uh, he sniped me. I think that probably was a blind shot because I don't think he could see me. But yeah, I, I think we really contributed to. Uh, our team succeeding in that game here, I think it probably wouldn't have been able to win without our input. Uh, although, wait, did we win? Uh, I'm actually not quite sure. Um, let's check out the post-game stats to see if we won or not. Yeah, so it turns out we actually didn't win that game, so that was kind of quite a shame, but I really feel like we had quite an input to that, uh, yeah, uh, quite an input in that match. And uh, still we managed to pick up our second class mastery badge along with 41,656 credits and 1,364 experience. So in the team score we can see that we actually were the best player on the team by far, getting 758 base experience, 3 kills and just short of 2,000 damage, which actually was... Uh, yeah, the third best damage on the entire team after two tier 9 tanks in a tier 6 light, so that's actually quite impressive. In the detailed report, we can see that we fired 30 shots, of which 21 hit and 18 penned, allowing us to do that 1916 damage. So, yeah, that's actually quite nice. And we received 3 hits, which obviously all 3 penned, although luckily that one shot from the IS3 only took out our traps. We received 1200. Uh, and 70 potential damage as a consequence of that and uh, also we spotted five enemy vehicles damaged seven and destroyed three and picked up 539 assistance damage so uh, yeah that was kind of it uh, to the t21 i mean i i kind of don't like this tank i'm not sure it just isn't kind of the kind of vehicle i like playing uh, i also don't like playing the chaffee for some weird reason although i know that lots of people love it to bits so, if you like the Chaffee, you're probably going to love the T21 as well. It's not an awful tank, you can do well in it. It's a quite good passive scout, and if it gets into the right situations, it can deal out lots of damage, as you can see in this game. Uh, but you're actually quite reliable on your teammates, especially for trying to play this tank in a kind of a medium tank way. And, uh, I mean, for me, this tank was just a grinding stepping stone on the way to the T-57 Heavy, which is just, you know, I mean, that tank's ridiculous, it's just overpowered in my opinion, and that's why I have to get it. So, yeah, the T-21, it's not going to get a thumbs up from me, uh, maybe you'll be able to do well in it, I personally wasn't, I think this was the best game I ever had in it, and I mean, it was good, but it wasn't amazing, and yeah, that's why, uh, really, I can't recommend this tank, unless you really like the kind of a uh, slowish, uh, but quite dangerous light tank kind of uh, tank type, then maybe you'll want to have this tank. But I really can't see anybody getting really excited about this vehicle um, just because the stats are kind of, they kind of, it's a bit like on the Chiri that I reviewed shortly. They kind of cancel each other out in terms of playstyle. So 
in a way, it doesn't leave you with very many opportunities to really exploit the potential of this vehicle. So anyway, I hope you appreciated this review and if you did, consider rating it uh, below the video screen. And uh, maybe even subscribe to my channel for more stuff like this. And uh, I've got probably the second place of the replay contest coming up tomorrow. So I hope you're looking forward to that and thanks for watching as usual and I hope I see you then. Bye bye.